Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a watch that was launched back in 2022. Now, this is a fun piece, the Ublo Big Bang Integral Ceramic. Back in 2020, Ublo launched the Big Bang Integral, taking what was already a fairly integrated combination of watch and band and fully integrating it in the style of a integrated bracelet sports watch. Hublot is very much inclined to give the people what they want, oftentimes courting controversy because they are brash, they are incredibly flamboyant, and yes, Hublot has been known to copy the homework design-wise of other brands. Hublot, however, also understands the luxury watch landscape with a degree of incisive brilliance that few match because they recognize what others don't, that collecting luxury watches is inherently absurd, humorous, unnecessary, and therefore should be entirely fun, unadulterated fun. It should make you smile. And that's what Hublot watches do so well. So right here, this Big Bang Integral Blue Ceramic features a 42 millimeter case, more wearable than Hublot Big Bangs of the past. You can see that it's 13.8 millimeters thick, being all titanium, ceramic, and sapphire. It's actually quite light. And two different ways to measure this. If we measure just the case, lug to lug, it's going to be 49.3 millimeters. If we measure the end link on each side, then the total rigid distance across the wrist is 52.7 millimeters. I've often liked individual Hublot models. I was never necessarily a fan of the brand as a whole because I'm rarely a fan of every watch or every line built by a brand. But a lot of what Hublot does is fun and geared towards making watches you'd want to wear every day. And that starts with ergonomics as Hublot has long understood that you can make a bigger watch but not a bigger customer. So even though this is a large timepiece, it wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see the lugs are not going over the edge. And while it's not a thin watch, a jacket cuff will slide over just fine. Ceramic, really light, really comfortable, also really scratch resistant. And that is a big part of the appeal of any ceramic watch. They don't need to be refinished because frankly, when you see a mark on a ceramic watch, it's usually something else wearing off on the ceramic. For instance, I've removed metal that is worn off of doorknobs or car seat belt buckles from ceramic surfaces. I've done this doing well, little more than applying a pencil eraser, which means that ceramic is almost indelible as long as you're not that buster who often knocks your watch and breaks crystals. If you don't break crystals, you're not going to break ceramic. If you are that guy who breaks crystals, I can't think of any luxury watch that's safe for your consumption. Maybe an RM53, but that's a detail for another day. The bracelet's nicely integrated, so we have a case that flows into the lugs that flows into a tapered bracelet. The faceting is impressive with the combination of polish and satin for contrast. You can see that unlike many ceramic bracelets, the removable links here are actually fixed by screws, which I applaud. Most ceramic bracelets, even on high luxury brands like Audemars Piguet, they resort to sort of a pin sleeve system, almost like a 90s tag Heuer. Here, you can remove all these links using a screwdriver, which is how it should be on a high luxury watch. The clasp is titanium. You'll find most of the metal hardware on this watch is titanium. It's a non-sequential close. It's got the Hublot logo and company name. Twin trigger release, so you have to press both of them to pop it open. The watch does feature a screw down crown. It is 100 meters water resistant, so it's fairly shock tolerant, water resistant, and scratch resistant. You can see why I say Hublot sometimes copies other brands' homework. Now clearly there's a lot of Royal Oak offshore in here, but Hublot also understands that nothing has ever been original in the watch industry, as Audemars Piguet has cribbed its fair share of engineering and style from other brands. Let's not forget that there were entire decades when most of their movements were made by Le Cult and Jager Le Cult. Hublot makes its own movements today. So while the style might be a little bit derivative of an offshore, it's Hublot's original take in the same sense that every impressionist after the first few was composing in the style that they had learned. So this is an interpretation of a style as rendered by the performance artist Hublot. 
So we have the stacked layered design of something like an offshore. You can see we have a rubber shoulder around the crown as well as on the ends of the chronograph pushers, which you will note are both satinated and polished for good measure. The bezel features vertical satination, but polish on its edge. And if you look, it's a very fine bevel on the side. We have these H pattern titanium bolts. You can see they're both polished and media blasted. We have an open dial that features a column wheel as well as a lateral clutch on the dial side. One element I've always liked about the Unico family of movements is that they are basically inverted chronographs, giving you the fun parts, the column wheel and the lateral clutch on the dial side. Now, it's also a flyback chronograph, which means you can reset and restart without first stopping. You'll also appreciate that the minutes register goes up to 60 minutes, which is not something commonly featured on chronographs, and it is a feature and a function I like quite a bit. You can also see it sits on its own separate sapphire. We have applique satinated metal hour indices and satinated hands at center. We have that little individual window for the current date, and I'll show you how this works. Let's just make sure we're not in the date change danger zone there. Okay, we weren't. Note hacking seconds. Now I'm going to activate the quick set system. And there is a skeletonized disc that runs around the dial and it sits over a highlight panel. And that's how that works. So we have a quick set, we have hacking seconds, we have a flyback chronograph, we have crisp column wheel actuation. And you can see the column wheel even has a little Ublo H bolt at the center. And then right there is the lateral clutch. Let's do a loom shot. No shortage, as you can see, including, curiously, sub-registers, which is always a nice feature to have. The dial has excellent depth, as you can see, dished from the outside. It's like an amphitheater for your wrist. And the Ublo logo is silkscreened, or metalized, I should say, on the underside of the primary sapphire. Flipping it all over, you could see the HUB 1280 movement, which is the second generation Unico. It's sometimes called the Unico 2. And what makes it different from the Unico 1 is that it is a 6.75 millimeter thickness, which doesn't make it an ultra thin by any means. But the original Unico was 8.05, so this is 6.75. It's thinner, it fits in thinner watches. It's got a bi directional pole based winding system, much like Magic Lever that energizes a 72 hour power reserve. It beats sway at 4 hertz, pivots on 43 joules, and you can see it says. It is full adjusted. I take that to mean five positions, which is the industry standard for chronometer and high horology adjustment. Now, while it primarily uses Etichron for timing adjustment and beat error adjustment, you can see it also has a proprietary micrometric regulator that has a little Ublo H on it. You can also see that the media blasted movement has been extensively blued with silvered wheels and springs in order to give it a lovely, unconventional two-tone treatment. So this is a really cool watch on a couple of different levels and a timepiece that you can wear just about all the time as long as you do it with a smile on your face. No luxury watch is necessary for telling time, and Hublot understands that. Hublot catches a lot of flack for proposing that watches should be nothing but fun, and unfortunately, this is a hobby that takes itself way too seriously. I actually see things Hublot's way, and if you do, reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.